The Israeli government estimates between 100 and 150 people are being held hostage by Hamas. And for the families of those people, this is a time of intense fear and sadness. My next guest is from one of those families. She's an American who moved from Brookline, Massachusetts, to north of Tel Aviv eight years ago. Her family members were living about two and a half hours' drive away from her in kibbutz near Oz, which is close to the border with Gaza and was attacked by Hamas on Saturday. And five of her family members are now missing. Abby Own is my guest, and she is in Herzliya this morning. Abby, thank you for being on our program this morning. I'm anxious to share your story. Good morning to you. Thank you. Good morning, and thank you for having me on. I'm wondering if we could begin on Saturday. When, what did you know? What do you know about what happened on Saturday and how your family members were taken? We woke on Saturday at 6.30 in the morning to sirens. I think the rest of the country, literally east to west, north to south, woke the same way. Um, and we jumped out of bed and took our kids to a bomb shelter, uh, came back upstairs and put them back in their beds and tried to go back to sleep, but pretty quickly started getting photos and videos of Hamas terrorists infiltrating the Gaza border. Um, and because we have family that is just a few um, kilometers over the border, we have a family WhatsApp group um, where we were getting messages that Hamas terrorists were in the kibbutz. Uh, they were in their bomb shelters, but they could hear them. They could hear gunfire. They could hear them in their homes. Uh, and they were sending messages that they were afraid for their lives. And, and Abby, just to just pause in that story for a moment, if you would, because we have pictures of your family members, and I'd like to to show people, the people of, of, about whom you're speaking. So uh, this is a cousin. Is it Carmela Dan and Ofer yes. Calderon, Sahar Calderon, uh, Noya Dan, and Erez Calderon? Carmela Dan is 80, Erez Calderon is 12, and these are the five members. So. In, in, in the messages, the text messages, the WhatsApp messages that they were sharing among your family members, what were the kinds of things that they were saying? They're here. They're here. What do we do? What if we don't get out? This is a Holocaust. We stopped getting messages from them around 11 or 12 in the morning. We think that the army asked them to stop using their phone. Um, and we didn't hear anything from any one of those five. We know um, it took hours for the Israeli army to get control of the kibbutz, and by the time they did, it had been burned to the ground, and many people had been slaughtered. Um, but they know that those five weren't there. And on Sunday, ha Hamas uploaded a video of Erez, who was 12, in their hands. So on the bottom right corner of the screen, that is Erez, and here's a full frame of him, uh, just 12 years old. So you saw this video that Hamas had posted of your relative, leading you to believe that he was alive, but taken. Yes. Is that what you now believe, or what you, yes. what you believe has happened we to believe, all five? We believe that all five are being held hostage by Hamas terrorists in Gaza. Do you have any confirmation of that officially, Abby, at all, or any information about them? We know we, we don't have official information from the government, but the video is um, we take it as confirmation. We the Israeli army and the system here is is very thorough. And so they went through and are continuing to go through the wreckage in the kibbutz and no proof there has been found of them. And they do have relatives that survived this attack. And so we feel very uh, confident that this is a situation. What is your fear for your family members this morning? I have a 12-year-old son in the next room. I, I, my fears are, are everything. How a child and how anyone could be in the hands of terrorists, what they're doing to them, how they're treating them, how we get them released. Noya has special needs. Carmela is 80, and she can't live without heart medication. We need to get the Red Cross in there. We need to get them released and brought home safely. That, for me, is the only hope and the only option right now. It looks, from the indications um, and what we're hearing from Israel's military, Israel's defense force, that a ground assault is certainly it, it being considered at this point. And the fact that there are hostages like your family members is really complicating the situation in terms of Israel's decision-making. Um, what do you feel 
is the right course of action for the country, given that you have family members who may be in the area that is targeted? I, I don't have a, a, an understanding necessarily of the military, the government, but I believe that Israel was attacked by terrorists, that this was, for us, 9-11 and Pearl Harbor and the Holocaust. And what happened is atrocious. We want the hostages who are innocent civilians released, and then we can deal with a terror organization, which is Hamas. I, I believe a ground war would be bad for the civilians of Gaza and for the people of Israel. There's no positive outcome in this, but we, sh we want innocent civilians that are hostages that are my family members returned. So a pause in any thinking of ground assault until there is full word on the hostages and, and hopefully returned. Is that what you're, you were hoping for at this point? That, that would be my hope, yes. I don't know if you were listening, of course, as I said, you, you're from Massachusetts before you moved to Israel. Um, the U.S. president yesterday, as he made an address offering full-throated support uh, for yes. Israel and condemning the Hamas attacks as pure evil. I'm wondering what you heard in Joe Biden's words. I believe that he um, was very, very clear. I think he was was black and white about the fact that he stands against terror. And I think it is important to differentiate as a North American, as someone who grew up in the United States, we know that the Israel-Palestine issue is complex and complicated. This is not that. This is an issue of Hamas. Hamas is a terror organization in the same way that ISIS is a terror organization. And we are not dealing with a government or a military. We are dealing with terrorists. And I think that President Biden took a stance yesterday against terrorism, both coming from Gaza and the possibility of terrorism from Lebanon. And I think it's important for North Americans to understand this is not about the civilians in Gaza. This is about Hamas. They are terrorists. And again, on that point, I mean, obviously you're dealing with personal heartache as you await word on your five family members. Um, but the overall, I'm, I'm, I'm interested to know what your overall feeling is as you watch things unfold, as you have a fuller appreciation of the scope of what Hamas did on Saturday, what, what are you watching unfold around you now in Israel? And what, what are your thoughts on it? I'm watching two things unfold. One, I'm watching atrocities that I never expected to live through in my lifetime as a Jew who lives in the aftermath of the Holocaust, seeing what happened on Saturday it is inconceivable that people, 3,000 terrorists would take from land and air and sea to kill and, and maim and rape and drag corpses back to Gaza and hold them hostage. It's inconceivable. And on the other hand, I have never been part of a community or a country that knows how to unite and raise funds and get gear and feed and care for one another. And it breaks my heart that something like this has to happen in order for us to, to come together like this as a country. There really are no adequate words to express uh, support at this time and to express you know, sympathy for what it is that you're going through. But Abby, I thank you very much for sharing your story. We will hope that you get good words soon about your family members and thank you for telling us about them today. Thank you so much. Abby Ohm from Herzliya in Israel.